What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today we are taking a look at the 2021 Ford F-150. But we're not really taking a look at the truck, we're taking a look at the technology inside the truck. This vehicle features the SYNC 4 system, the, the My Ford Touch is the very first version of it. Then you had Sync, and then you had Sync 3, and then this is Sync 4. So now this technology and a lot of what we're gonna do in this video, show you how to use it from A to Z. This is a truly a tutorial video, teach you how to use the actual technology, but it's not just good for the F-150. It's good for a lot of the future technology, a lot of the future vehicles Ford's gonna come out with that features the Sync 4 system. So without further ado, let's hop inside and show you how to use your brand new SYNC 4 system. All right, and as you can see, this is that 12 inch screen and you can kind of see it's pretty massive. In fact, for uh, comparison's sake, I've got a $100 bill test where you can see exactly how much bigger this screen is compared to a $100 bill. So pretty cool stuff there that it is that massive of a screen. All of the videos and pictures I've seen don't do this screen justice. And also my massive hands make it look a little smaller than it actually is. But trust me, this thing is awesome. But let's talk about the layout of the screen itself first. And the first thing you're going to notice is that because of the extra real estate that they've given us, you've got two screens built into one. So you've got this little sliver over here. That little sliver of screen is dedicated for kind of a picture in a picture. If you remember that, I don't know how old, uh, old each of you guys are, but picture in a picture used to be a thing. Well, that's what this is. You've got a side screen and then you've got your main screen over here. And then you've got all of the navigation buttons that are located down here. If you wanted to swap between different screens, you can do that just by tapping each one of these little menu buttons down here at the bottom. And that changes what is over here on the left hand side of the screen. On the right hand side of the screen, if you're wanting to flip through the different cards, if you let's just go ahead and call them cards, you can hit up and down and you can see the different options inside of the picture in picture or the cards. If you want to see the list, you hit this button and it shows you all of your different available cards that you can choose from. Uh, so let's say you wanted to look at the eco behavior. You can kind of see what you're looking at. I mean, there's a lot of different choices. But that is kind of how the whole thing is navigated. That's how you operate this whole thing. Now let's do this. The very first thing you're going to want to do when you get in and purchase your vehicle, whether it's a F-150 or what every vehicle you want with the sync 4 system first thing you need to do is go ahead and pair up your phone now i happen to have an iphone 12 pro max uh, as you can see right here and uh yeah so you can see iphone 12 pro max i'm going to show you how to pair up that phone so the first thing you want to do is hit the phone icon and then you want to click add phone search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found go into the settings menu and click on bluetooth and if everything works correctly, you should have the device, the vehicle, show up at the bottom. Tap on it. Confirm that the pin displayed Hit on yes the here. Is the pin displayed on your device. Hit pair here. And it's going to say, do you want to allow uh, contacts and favors to sync? Yes, definitely allow. And it'll say that it's done pairing. For safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. I definitely recommend that you go ahead and turn the 911 assist on. 911 assist is this. Heaven forbid you're in an accident and the airbags deploy or the fuel cutoff switch is engaged. The vehicle will notice that and it will use your paired phone to call 911 for you even if you're unconscious. Uh, so it's a great safety feature that you'll never have to pay for. Whereas a lot of other manufacturers out there for same kind of uh, feature, you're going to end up paying for that feature, but not on the Ford. So that's pretty cool. Now, what I need to do here is on my phone is going to say, hey, do you want to use Apple CarPlay with Sync 4? Definitely hit use CarPlay. And that actually shows you, and I'm going to say iPhone may collect or unconnected vehicle data. Yes, that's fine. Hit enable and it will connect to the Apple CarPlay as long as everything is right. All right, so now we are good to go. So my phone is now added to the setup, um, or at least it should be anyways. Now you'll notice that there's an extra menu down here and it's called CarPlay because I have an iPhone. And guess what? Look at this. It has wireless Apple CarPlay, which is so stinking cool. I'm so glad that Ford has given us this feature. Um, thank you, Ford. <laughs> I absolutely love wireless Apple CarPlay because 
Uh, every time I get in my 2017 Raptor, I'm always using CarPlay, like every single time. But I have to plug it in. Well, this is nice because you don't have to plug it in. It's nice to plug it in because, you know, it charges your phone while you're doing your thing or what have you. And you can still use the wired Apple CarPlay. But here's the cool part about Apple CarPlay is you can come in here, look at your music. You can look at all of your contacts. You can go, I mean, it is literally your entire, eye. it's at Apple CarPlay right there on the screen. I mean, it is so nice. You have plenty of options with Apple CarPlay. But... There's some other features that I want to show you here in just a second. All right, so this is really not a tutorial for Apple CarPlay, uh, but I just wanted you to know how to get it paired up, how to get it synced up, and how to use it. And now you've got Apple CarPlay just wirelessly. So cool. Um, all right, so let's go back in and dive into each one of these particular menus and what each menu does. You're going to want to stay all the way through because the one we talk about features, it really, really gets kind of crazy. So let's go into audio. And as you can see, you click on audio and it shows you inside of this one particular tab or the main menu, if you will, and it showcases all of your different options like Sirius is your source. You can browse, you can change the channel, you can pause and rewind live satellite radio. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. But let's say we want to get rid of this card. If you see that little marker right there, you should be able to, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm not, <laughs> maybe I am mistaken. Uh, but uh, in some situations, you can actually swipe this thing and get it out of here, but it doesn't look like I have that ability in this current mode, so what have you. All right, let's get back into this part anyways. So here, if I wanted to change the source, I could change it from AM, FM, satellite radio, Bluetooth audio, or I can go back into the Apple CarPlay. That's the Apple CarPlay logo right there. I want to. Uh, we can't listen to a lot of audio because of copyright reasons. But as you can see, it's all been playing in the background um, for this particular song. Well, what's cool about it is it's actually been playing for a little while. And so what I can do is I can come in here, I can pause it, and I can even rewind. Isn't that cool? So it has been recording the songs on live satellite, Sirius satellite radio. So it is really, really nice. Now this is not a new feature. It was available in the past on some of our other Ford vehicles, but it is a really neat feature that you need to know about. You can pause and rewind live satellite radio. Very, very cool stuff. And then here's the other part is, is you've got these menu buttons down here, what I'm scrolling through right there. Those are your presets. So let's say that I want to change it. I want to listen to uh, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. I can't even talk. <laughs> so change the station to that. And then once I've got that say, so now what I've got, I'm listening to this station. All I have to do is click and hold on this little menu button down here. And as you can see up at the top, it said hold preset to save. Now I've got this set up as a preset. Now let's say if I want to listen to a local country music station. So I want to come in here, I'm going to hit AM, FM. I'm going to change it to, let's just call it 102.5 The Bull. Little Uncle Cracker, okay, you know, hey, <laughs> and heard his, heard his uh, music in a while. But now that I've got it set to where I want it, I can come in here and save the next preset. So what I'm trying to show you is you can have satellite radio presets right next to AM FM presets, next to AM preset presets, whatever that you want. And you can save all of these different presets back to back to back. So that way you got quick and easy access to bounce from AM FM to satellite radio to everything in between, which is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, that's how you kind of take a look at that. Now I'm going to show you, there's also the ways you can control a lot of this. So as you can hear, this is just a jacked up AM station. It's not actually a real station, but if you come in here and hit the voice button, 102.5. Tuning to FM 102.5. The system is smart enough to notice that I said, okay, well, I wanted to do go back over to FM. And as you can see, it goes right back to that station. Let's say you wanted to listen to Sirius Octane as a station on Sirius Satellite Radio. Hit that same voice button on your steering wheel, which I think you even have the ability to go with uh, command words, wake words. Let's see if those work. Okay, Ford. Maybe not. <laughs> 
Okay, Ford, Sirius Octane. Okay, so it looks like that, the wake words are going to be either a feature that's turned off right now or available only on the Sync 4A system, which is found in that um, brand new Mustang Mach-E. So let's just hit the voice button and let's go with that, about it that way. Octane. Tuning to Octane. And there you go. Now it's changed the station. Every single time I do this, it's changing the station automatically. So pretty cool stuff that it gives you that ability to voice activate, but also control it with the screen as, uh, as well. Let's say if you wanted to click, come in here and click to browse, you can actually filter through the specific genres of, the, of channels. So like, let's say if you wanted to listen to music, you can select rock and it will show you all of your rock stations. And you even have the ability to go to on demand, which is a brand new feature. Oh, and I got a text message on my ways or on my ways on my Apple CarPlay. Notice that it automatically popped up. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, but once again, hit browse. You can hit pop. You can filter through these. Hit 90s pop, uh, and then boom, it'll change it right there. If you wanted to look at sports talk, you can do that. You want to go into news, talk. All of those different options are available right there at the top, as I've just shown you. So pretty cool stuff that you have the ability to change your source, browse, go back and forth between the different channels. You also have the ability to pause and rewind, and you can even click related channels so you can see what other channels are related to this one specifically. So pretty cool stuff there. Now, one other cool feature about satellite radio, if you're listening to it, you have the ability to hit this little bell icon, which will cause you to save that bell, that, that, that song, so that way if it shows up anywhere on satellite radio, it will alert you and say, hey, your favorite song is playing, do you want to listen to it? You have that feature right now, but most people aren't going to use that anymore, especially now that you've got wireless Apple CarPlay, and you can voice activate all of the music straight through your smartphone. I'm going to show that to you a little bit later. All right, let's come into the navigation system. And when you do that, because I've got Apple CarPlay already set up, it's going to ask you two different versions. Do you want to use the Ford Sync system or do you want to use Waze? Let's just see if Waze works. Enable apps. Yes. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. This app's language does not match the active language of Sync. Voice commands may not work as expected. Okay. Thank you, Sync. <laughs> Now, her voice dictation and voice uh, recognition is maybe not as good as it should be. Uh, let's just cancel this. I'm not really worried about getting Waze through the setup. Even though it tells me I can use Waze natively on this system through the wireless Apple CarPlay, um, I I'm probably not going to use that ever because if I want to use Waze, I'm going to use it inside of Apple CarPlay. I'll show you how to use that here just after this one. But let's just go ahead and for the for giggles and grins, hit sync. And as you can see, this is Ford's setup. This is Ford's menu. Now, I mentioned to you earlier, you have the ability to move this panel out of the way. This is the great example of how to do that. And you hit the button over here, and it makes it the massive touchscreen, the massive 12 inches. It utilizes almost all of that space tap the button again and it'll allow you to come in and show you that that separate card now the nice part about this particular setup is you can move it around you can pinch to zoom so you can pinch in pin, uh, zoom in zoom out whatever you want to do and if you just want to reset the view you just hit that button right there if you want to type in a specific destination you can uh, click on that button it'll tell you where you specifically are uh, and then you'd hit over here this little menu button uh, showcases menu search recents and saved if you wanted to you could come in here to saved and you can set up a home address and type in uh, 5041 Ford and it'll make some suggestions boom there's a suggestion all right I'm gonna save that as my home address and now anytime I want to say uh, destination home it'll automatically give you directions to this setup now keep in mind that there are two different versions of the navigation system you have the navigation system and then you have the connected built-in navigation system both of these are Ford's versions of the navigation system that are going to be 
um, uh, that are built into the system. So the, the navigation system is going to be a trial version. Basically, you get 90 days worth of free connected navigation where it's pulling in um, live traffic updates. It's pulling in fresh data on a constant basis. And then you will have to pay a fee after that 90 days is up. This vehicle, because it's a loaded up vehicle itself, has the built-in connected navigation system, which comes with three years worth of free services. So that is going to be your biggest difference. Um, is this one's got the built-in system. The other version is pulling fresh data consistently. Uh, but if you want to go back in and find another address, hit this little arrow button over here, and you can type in search. Type in any address that you want to. Let's say you wanted to go to our Pell City location. 1101 Martin, Martin Street North. There it is right there. So that is our Pell City location. Technically, it's 1103 Martin Street North, but uh, 1101 is our original building from when we first bought the place. Uh, but the cool part is, is it tells you you can avoid four by four roads, which is pretty cool. That's, you know, that's pretty nice. Um, if there were toll roads, you even have the ability to avoid those if you want to. Um, let's just click on this. Okay, cool. It gives you a couple of different options. If I didn't want to go I-2059, I can select... Uh, I-459, and I can actually tell you that's a little bit faster just because uh, you don't have as many speed traps uh, in this direction. And then the cool part is you can hit start. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Please proceed to the highlighted road. And so if I can be very transparent, I'm not sure that I would use their navigation system very much because I'm so used to Apple CarPlay. And from what I hear, Android Auto is just as good. And uh, so I think I would probably be using the, the, the native phone app or the phone um, integration into the screen. Uh, so, but, you know, I, it's my job in this video to show you how to use this just in case you want to use it. Now, the cool part is, is you can click here. You can see the overview of all of the turns. You can turn the audio on and off. So like my wife, she loves to put up the navigation every single time she gets in the car, but she doesn't want to hear the turn by turn. She just wants to see how much longer until she gets there. And so that's pretty cool. And then you can even come in here and add an extra point. Let's say that I wanted to go to some kind of, let's say if I wanted to go to Walmart on my way to our Pell City location. Type in Walmart, Birmingham, Alabama. All right, so I, it shows me all of my available options. Let's say I want to do this one. Add that to the trip. It's going to add 15 minutes to the trip. And guess what? Boom, shaka laka laka boom. It's automatically showing me the stop or the point of interest on the way there. So pretty cool stuff there. And if you want to cancel the route at any point, you can click this button and cancel the trip. Uh, or you can say go to the next stop. Or you can also do that so you can do it by clicking this button or hit the voice button and say, cancel route. Canceling route. There you go. It's that easy. So you don't have to dive into the screen every single time. Now, the other cool part is, is you have the ability to voice activate directions here. So using that same voice button, because keep in mind, all of this typing going on, this typing is not going to be available while you're cruising on the road. But what is available is just do it with your phone or with your voice rather. Destination street address. Say the address that you're looking for, like 125 Main Street, New York. 1103 Martin Street North, Pell City. Here's what I found. You can say set as destination. Mm. Set as destination. Starting route to 1103 Martin Street North. Pretty cool. So you never have to touch the screen to use the navigation Please system. Proceed to but the I will tell you road. that Apple CarPlay is the same thing. So once again, I'm not trying to bash the Ford system. They have made light years of improvements on this system compared to the last generation. But Apple CarPlay is still pretty stinking awesome, and I'm just used to it. So there you go. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what that boils down to. That is going to be your navigation system. That's kind of just a real basic overview of how to operate that navigation system. So let's move on into the CarPlay and show you what it looks like there as well. So now since I've got the Apple CarPlay is already paired up, my phone's already paired up with it, all I have to do is click and hold that same voice button and it will automatically turn it into um, the, the voice button for Siri, uh, which or Android Auto, depending on whatever you have, um, or the, I guess the, the Google Assistant. 
So if I click and hold that voice button, you can say, I need directions to Town & Country Ford in Pell City. Getting directions to Town & Country Ford Pell City. And there you go. It's pretty stinking cool. Now this is starting gonna, route to town and country Ford Pell City. Now the cool part about this is this is going to Head be southwest on I twenty west. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be the actual Apple Maps, and the cool part is you can even come into Waze and open this up, and it's a really intuitive app. As you can see, it responds a lot better than the first thing that I showed you. And the nice part is is you can come in here and type out directions there as well. So let's say if you want to go to Town and Country Ford in Pell City. And boom, shaka laka laka boom. You got that. Uh, now you've got the ability to uh, automatically go with. Um, uh, uh, Waze is nice because it has the, the police traps. Like if there's a guy, the police officer that's kind of taking traffic or if there's accidents, Waze is fantastic for this. Uh, but I absolutely love that. And then the other thing that you can even do is Google Maps has got the ability to have, as you can see, the actual satellite view while you're driving down the road. That's also a pretty cool feature. All right, so enough on the Apple CarPlay navigation uh, and also the audio. Let's move into this button. This is a customizable button. So let's say you use something on a frequent basis. You have the ability to set this. This is a favorites button. You can change it to whatever you want to. So let's say that you use a certain feature all the time. Let's say... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, let's say you like to go into your driver's assistance all the time. So now, anytime I come into my menu, see how it changed it from favorites. Now it's driver assistance. So if I come in here and type in driver assistance, boom, I have access to all of my driver assistance features right there quickly and easily. Now, I believe to edit it again, you want to tap it one more time and then you can change it to whatever you want. So it's constantly changing. Let's say you wanted to look at uh, messages. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's a big bummer. Uh, let's see here. Edit favorite. We'll change it to something else. Let's say you need to know uh, more about your towing information. There you go. You can add a trailer, select a trailer, all this other kind of stuff. The point is, is that you can change whatever it is that you use on a constant and frequent basis. You can change that. That is the customization that Ford did not give us in the previous version of this navigation system that I'm so excited that they gave it to us this time. I will tell you what I probably would use is going to be the zone lighting or if I had a, 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 it optioned, it would be the Pro Power on board, which, uh, as you know, you know Texas. At the time I'm making this video, Texans are getting hammered with the natural disaster of that cold, cold weather. And what's crazy is these people with the power boost and the uh, the Pro Power on board, they're powering their entire homes using the Pro Power on board. So they're basically saving lives by keeping people warm and keeping people fed using technology in their truck. That is so cool that Ford has come out with technology that's actually usable, which they do all the time. I didn't come out right. <laughs> um, so yeah, there we go. Now you can come in here and turn on this zone. I think you got to turn it on first. Turn on this zone, turn on that zone, and you can turn on all your zones, turn this off, turn this off, but it is a really cool way you can adjust and turn on the lights as you need them. So enough with the actual uh, favorites button. You know you can fit anything into that little menu that you want to. Apps, I don't think I've ever used this on my truck, even though they've got Ford apps inside of here. Uh, but nonetheless, it gives you the ability to look at Pandora or other apps that are saved on the phone, you can also have it up here. I think that now that we have wireless Apple CarPlay, this is going to be a redundant uh, tab that not very many people are going to use. But let's just click on Ford Pass. Um, I mean, you can see it's just like... Add this vehicle to enable features now? No. But you know, either way, I, I don't think anybody's going to really use this apps tab. Very, very few people will use it, my guess, but I'm sure some people will. So uh, just let me know in the comments down below if you actually will use that apps tab. I mean, and I'm also kind of curious what you would use it for. Settings. All right, so now we're getting into the nitty gritty on how to customize the vehicle itself. This is what is really, really important that you actually understand what's going on here. Hit settings. You have the ability to adjust everything inside this menu. Uh, so obviously you can go into sound change your tone, 
turn the treble up, the mid-range and bass from what everybody's telling me at Ford is that when Ford brings it to you equally balanced like this, this is how the engineers had designed this Bang & Olufsen sound system, which by the way, this one's got the b &O audio system in it, uh, but it doesn't have the b &O audio unleashed. Uh, if it had the unleashed system, it would have the speakers in the headrest and it would have the speakers in the headliner as well, as long as long uh, uh, along with a, a lot of other things. But you can control the balance and the fade from front to back, side to side. Now dip, baby, dip. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry I had to. You knew I, you know I had to because I'm corny and cheesy. Uh, speed compensated volume. This is basically the menu that as I start driving down the road with my uh, stereo on, the faster I go, it will actually increase the volume so that way it sounds natural. So if you get a lot of wind noise, you can turn it on high. <clears throat> if you got normal, low, and totally off. Sound mode, exactly what it sounds like, surround or stereo. And moving back to the rest of your controls here. Sync navigation system. This is how you operate a lot of the settings inside of that, where you can change the map orientation, whether you want it to be 3D, 2D, or where no matter what, north is always up trailer routing exactly what it sounds like trailer optimized routing which is pretty cool but once again i don't have a um uh, i don't actually have a trailer set up for this particular vehicle uh but if you did that's where you would do uh show on map you can see all of these different options if i want to show gas stations food and what have you you have that ability uh voice on and off you can avoid specific routes, more settings, lots of different options. There's no way for me to cover absolutely everything. My goal in this video is to get you enough information so you can kind of get started in your new Sync 4 system. Um, we've got uh, avoid on route. Yeah, let's just go back. Let, let's get out of uh, the Sync navigation system. Let's go into the next one. Clock. That's going to be a big one because everybody's constantly changing your clock. Now, I'm going to show you a quick way to get there. So as you guys are sitting here looking at this main menu, if you tap on the clock at the top, if you actually tap on it, it takes you straight to that menu. So it's a faster way to get in and change the timing to whatever it is. And it actually is 4.52 p.m., which by the way, I need to kind of hurry because I'm starting to run out of sunlight <laughs> for the video. So let's get back into it. The clock, you know, there's not a whole lot to talk about change there. Satellite radio. Sirius Satellite Radio. You've got all these different options that you can customize and change. You can look at your demo, uh, the su subscription, you're in the demo menu. Everybody is texting me, leave me alone, I'm trying to make a YouTube video. <laughs> uh, satellite Radio. And by the way, it is nice that every time you get a text that it pops up, but it doesn't actually read the text out to you in case you're getting a private text message from someone else and someone else happens to be in your car. It is nice that, you know, you don't have to, it doesn't automatically read them to you unless you tap on them. Um, you can look at listening history. You can see all the different menus for the satellite radio. All right, so let's look at phone list. This is where if you have more than one phone, so like I've got my phone, my wife's phone paired up, my kid's phone paired up. You can have all of the different phones that are paired up. And then in here, if you wanted to, you can actually go in and disable or delete any specific phone. I uh, don't want to do that for the poor purposes of this um, uh, this tutorial right now, but yeah, that's what you're looking at. Now, the next thing is going to be vehicle. This is where it kind of gets a little crazy. 30, max, 30 minute max idle. So as we've been sitting here for a long time in this car, if I'm sitting here for 30 minutes, it will automatically shut off after 30 minutes uh, unless you turn that feature off. Uh, side note, that feature consistently turns itself back on every time you start the car. So every time you start the car, you're going to turn that off and that's for carbon monoxide so that we don't actually accidentally or on purpose kill yourself uh, with carbon monoxide. Rear occupant alert. You can turn that, turn that on, turn that off. Uh, you'll receive a reminder twice a year to check if you want to turn this feature back on. That's new. I didn't know that. So, uh, hey, I'm learning stuff with you guys. Easy entry, easy exit. Basically, it move, when you cut the vehicle off, it moves the seat back to get you in and out of the vehicle a lot easier. My key. Now, this is a, a big one. So, my key is a feature where basically when you buy a brand new Ford, you get two keys, right? Well, you can make one key a my key, in, which is basically a kid's key, and you can have a, the other one be the administrator key. 
And if you do it that way, then this key can be limited with a lot of different things. In fact, let me just kind of show that to you real quick. Go ahead and create a My Key. And all right, so uh, let's see here. It says place this in the backup location, which actually is in a different spot for every single vehicle. But in the F-150, it is in the cup holder and the cup holder closest to the back right next to the center console shifter. All right, so now this is gonna be the My Key. So I can limit it to where a 911 assist is always going to be turned on. So if little Johnny, if I'm scared he's gonna get an accident, no matter what, he can't turn it off. Uh, guess what, do not disturb. I can make it to where he won't be able to get notified in the vehicle while he's driving down the road. So that way he's not paying attention to his phone, he's paying attention to the road. Uh, traction control, I can keep them from doing burnouts in my F-150, isn't that kind of cool? You can limit the max speed of the vehicle. So if I don't trust him to drive 80 miles an hour, I can say, hey, the max speed you can go is 70 miles an hour. If I wanted to see, you know what, I don't really care if little Johnny does 100 miles an hour, you can turn that off. So all of this stuff is selectable and customizable. Uh, you can even put a speed minder. Basically, anything over 65 miles an hour, they're going to get dinged to death. Bling, 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 bling. Slow down, slow down, slow down. It, it pesters them until they slow down. So pretty cool stuff there as well. And then if I wanted to, you can clear all the my keys. Now, I will tell you that the second I cut this truck off, this key is going to be a my key. And the only way to turn my key off is to have that spare key that we've got in our office right now. The, basically, that is now the administrator key. You cannot clear these passwords or clear these, these restraints unless you have the administrator key. And it's expensive if you lose both the other set of key to get the my key taken off. You actually have to bring it into your Ford dealership and reset that feature. So just know that about the my key setup. All right, let's go back into uh, the vehicle. Whoop, whoop. Go back into the vehicle. You can see all of the other system stuff. Alarm system. Uh, you can see power tailgate. You can turn that on as power or manual. Once again, that feature is available on select F-150s. Not all F-150s have the power tailgate. Uh, lighting, ambient lighting, which is the glow of the floorboard and the cup holders and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of different options are going to be found underneath that vehicle setup. Connectivity. It's exactly what it sounds like. Bluetooth, wireless app proje uh, projection, uh, managed Wi-Fi networks, and also connected vehicle features. Now, this vehicle does feature over-the-air updates. So as you own the vehicle, Ford's going to consistently push out updates to make your experience driving this F-150 a lot better. Uh, the F-150 and the Mustang Mach-E were the two very first Ford vehicles to get this. And I feel like, if I remember correctly, that the F-150 is the only pickup truck on the market with over-the-air updates. These people will not leave me alone. <laughs> I'm about to have to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. Holy smokes. All right, so anyways, that's kind of all of the information that you need to see. Remote start, uh, wipers, all of this vehicle settings are going to be found right there. Connectivity general settings uh I, do i really need to read each one of these to you guys i don't know if i do but if i do there you go i will tell you one thing you're gonna need to know is this reset button so anytime you have issues with this setup the first thing that i would recommend that you do is restart your phone most people think there's an issue with sync system and it actually turns out to be an issue with the phone and it's the bluetooth and the very first thing that goes wrong with the bluetooth if you don't if you don't turn your phone off every now and then uh, bluetooth starts acting up and it'll make you feel like something's wrong with the system so restart your phone and then if that doesn't work then i would do a master reset on your actual setup i don't know who that is so we're not going to talk to them uh, <laughs> not right now for the sake of the video anyway all right so um, yeah you need to know under general and then reset that is where that master reset button is so restart the phone if that doesn't fix it do a master reset on the vehicle that should fix it um, and if by the way if that doesn't fix it then i'd also recommend unplugging the battery out of the vehicle for 45 minutes leaving it unplugged um, and then also kind of coming back after 45 minutes plug it back up and see if that fixes it so there you go all right so let's do this let's take a look at the rest of this stuff system updates this is that over the air updates we were talking about you can see scheduled up up updates uh you can you know schedule them to come up at any specific time you can look at update details let's see if it shows anything yep our system's up to date so we're good to go and uh yeah there you go voice control it's exactly what it sounds like 
Oh my goodness. These people are going to have to stop sending me some text messages. <laughs> uh, oh, there we go. So we talked about it earlier. Listen for the wake word. We turn that on and we can actually name out specific wake words. So if you say, okay, Ford. Oh, and it heard me. So <laughs> as you can see, it automatically heard me. Uh, so now let's go test out that wake word real quick. Okay, Ford, I need directions to 1103 Martin Street North in Pell City. Here's what I found. Boom! How cool is that? I mean, there you go. Starting route to 1103 How stinking cool is that? I knew that it had it. I just, it, when it didn't work, I started to second guess myself. Please proceed to the highlighted road. All right, so let's go back into the voice control. Um, you can change that preferred wake mode. Uh, advanced mode basically gives you shortened props. So once you get used to this vehicle and you've been in it for a little while, you might wanna hit that advanced mode. And then when she's talking back to you with the voice activation, that's what advanced mode is. It kind of confer or shortens down uh, her confirmations back to you. Phone confirmation, you can kind of see all that information. And we'll just keep on moving. 911 assist, we've already turned that on. Uh, let's see here. Valet mode. This is pretty cool. So this is a four-digit pin where you can lock out the valet so that way he can't see your system. He can't see where you live, and he can't stalk you and drive home and, and abduct you if you want to. So hit yes, and let's just say we're going to one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And now everything is locked out where he can't access anything until he knows that passcode. And now it's unlocked again. It's just a really nice way to keep prying eyes or anybody that's gonna be driving your vehicle out of your stuff. Kinda of keep them, leave them alone. Leave me alone, leave me alone. I don't want you to, you knowing where I live. Uh, mobile apps, once again, not really a big fan of the mobile apps because we've got the Apple CarPlay set up. So I don't spend a whole lot of time there. Uh, navigation sources. Uh, kind of what we talked about earlier, sync and ways. Uh, display, this is kind of cool because you can actually do a calm screen. You can calm yourself down with less information on the screen, which is kind of nice. Tap it and it comes back to normal. You can even do display off, which by the way, if you tap it again, comes back to normal. This dedicated button, there's a dedicated button for this. As you can see, just below the screen, it looks like a screen with a line through it tap that button it goes to call mode tap it again and it goes to off tap it again and your screen comes back to normal and as you can see you can change the mode from automatic day and night so yeah there you go you've got the uh the display mode vehicle hotspot so as you guys already should know if you don't uh but there is a wi-fi hotspot inside this vehicle so you can actually come in here you can look at your data usage which technically i've not paired this phone to the ford pass app uh, that is a conversation for another day your ford dealership should automatically set you up with that once they do it automatically activates the um, the wi-fi hotspot but this is where you come in and you can manage the devices look at the data usage turn it on and off what have you um, and then let's take a look at the last thing, which is going to be the personal profiles. So the cool part about this vehicle is, is if you like your setup this way and your spouse likes everything set up that way, then both of you guys can have your own thing. And the cool part is, is I can have my key set up for this profile. I can have the spare key set up to my spouse's profile. So pretty cool stuff there. So I can type in Mitchell and enter. And now I can set up the memory seating. I'm gonna set that to the first one. Oh, I gotta press the button itself. So hit the memory button. All right, so now anytime I come in and hit one, boom, everything. Oh yeah, do you wanna link the fob to the profile? Heck yes, I do. Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, to link Mitchell with the key fob, press and hold the lock button on the key fob that you want linked. There we go, key fob is successfully saved. Pretty stinking cool stuff there. All right, now I can come in here and it's linked to the key fob. Um, I can change all my stuff. I can save it. Uh, and once again, if you want to move anything around, you move it all around and click and hold the memory one recall. And now it'll automatically set it up and save it every single time. All right, so the features. My goodness, I didn't realize that uh, it was going to take. 
take so long to get to this point, but you've made it nearly to the end of the video. Driver assistance. This is an important. So this, the okay. So these two are extremely important. Driver assistance and owner's manual. Driver's assistance. This is where you turn on auto hold. Auto hold works like this. Let's say you do a lot of stop and go traffic, and you know normally when you come to a stop, you have to keep your foot on the brake to maintain that spot. Well, auto hold works like this. It will, if it's turned on, it will hold you there until you tap the gas, and then it'll allow you to move. If you have that feature off, guess what? You let off the brake and you'll start creeping forward. It's nice to be able to turn that feature on and off as you go. That's how you get to that specific setup. Cruise control. Now this one is, a fe is equipped with the adaptive cruise control. So normal cruise control is just like you had in your 1995 Ford Bronco. It, it's cruise control and it'll allow you to smack into the back of the person in front of you if you're not paying attention. That's for those guys that don't like the technology. You can turn the adaptive cruise control off. You can turn adaptive cruise control on. And by the way, lane centering is a function of that as well. You can turn that on and off. And intelligent cruise control basically is looking at the speed limit signs on the side of the road and it will adjust your speed based on what the speed limit of the road is pretty stinking cool stuff so basically what happens is if the speed limit is 70 miles an hour and then all of a sudden it knocks down to 60 miles an hour you it will automatically move you to 60 miles an hour unless you're like you know what i always like to go five miles an hour over the speed limit come back into the driver assist cruise control intelligent cruise control hit the tolerance let's say i like to go five miles an hour over the speed limit always so when that thing drops from 70 to 60 now it will instead of bringing me to 60 it'll bring me to 65 miles an hour so it'll do me five miles an hour over whatever that speed limit is if it's 65 miles an hour is the speed limit it'll let me do 70 miles an hour so on and so forth so it's nice that they give you a tolerance there all right so lane keeping system so there's a couple of different things lane keeping mode is a couple of different things alert means that it just alerts you hey that you're about to leave the lane and it vibrates the steering wheel the aid physically steers you back into the lane if you're not paying attention. And then alert and aid is obviously both. It'll steer you and vibrate the steering wheel. Now keep in mind, that is the setup for when you're not using the adaptive cruise control. When you're using adaptive cruise control, you get lane centering, and that lane centering physically and actively drives you and keeps you in the center of the lane as long as intelligent cruise and the adaptive cruise control is turned on. <clears throat> and it is just it's nice that it actually will keep you in the lane this is for when you are not using adaptive cruise control all right lane keeping intensity this is the intensity of how hard does it shake the steering wheel you're not going to be able to hear that because of the microphone but it shakes the entire steering wheel it's really really nice um, uh, speed limit assist speed warning so you can turn it on to where it actually warns you when you're going way too fast not going to spend a whole lot of time on that uh, <laughs> pre-collision assist I recommend everybody turn this feature on you can turn on distance indication basically it'll automatically uh, look for cars in front of you and if it sees that you're about to get in an accident it will alert you now I like to turn my alert sensitivity on high I'd rather accidentally get alerted and save a crash versus hey you know what it didn't alert me fast enough so i like that one set to high now it'll scare you the first time you use it but it is really really nice once it's done evasive steering assist so if the vehicle deems that i am about to get in an accident and if i initiate turning the steering wheel the vehicle will help me through that maneuver so i don't hit that person in front of me now that is a feature you can turn on and turn off and by the way it's not going to steer you out of the way if for some reason that that uh, you don't turn the steering wheel it's not going to turn the steering wheel for you you have to initiate the turn and then it will help you through that turn uh, so there you go pre-collision assist pretty cool technology blind spot information system it's exactly what it sounds like it's the lights that come on in the in the uh, mirrors themselves that warn you that hey someone is in your blind spot um, parking aid sensors that's pretty nice is rear sensors always on or off Cross traffic alert is when you're backing out of a parking space, it's looking for the radars and it's seeing if someone is crossing you as you're backing up. Reverse brake assist, that is a really nice technology that if you are backing up and you're about to run over little Johnny, it should hopefully stop you from actually running over little Johnny. 
and then driver alert that is the technology that says it's looking in the lines in the road and you're bouncing all over the place and says bro you, you you're dozing off you need to you're all over the road you might need to rest before you continue driving a little further that's what that driver alert is so there you go zone lighting we kind of already talked about that you can turn specific zones of lights on and off towing kind of already mentioned a little bit of this but you can add trailers select trailers and delete them owner's manual it's impossible for me to go over everything here so i just want to kind of get you started and you can figure out what you need to from here so let's say you don't understand where how to operate something this vehicle has a digital owner's manual so let's say you wanted to do adaptive cruise control so just type in cruise hit search and let's see what comes up cruise control indicators what is cruise cruise control adaptive cruise con control precautions that's pretty cool you can go to cruise control limitations and if this is uh adaptive cruise control you you if there is a video you actually have the option of looking at specific videos on the specific product or the topic what have you and you can do that by under going under videos and you can say you know what i don't really understand uh let's see here i don't really understand driving and operating i don't understand what auto start stop is it literally is downloading the data from the cloud your vehicle has an available feature that's designed to help reduce fuel consumption and the amount of emissions it's called auto start stop Here's how it works. It's everybody's favorite auto feature. Start stop automatically <laughs> turns on at startup unless you decided to turn it off using the on off button located on the center console. So once again, we're not going to sit here and watch. Whoa, that was a good song. Uh, but yeah, you can see the lots of videos and I mean, it's plenty of stuff to look at, plenty of stuff to watch, and you can continue to learn more about your setup without actually having to reach back out to the Ford dealership, which by the way, that's why we're making this video is because it's important to us to help teach you, get you started in the technology. It takes a lot of time to make videos like this. So if you could do me a favor, smash the thumbs up button because seriously, you know, it really does help the YouTube algorithm make sure this content makes it out to other people. So we would really, really appreciate it. Now, the last thing, once again, we've already kind of talked about it, but you have the ability to flip through and look at different um, tabs on this secondary menu. So there you go. That is a li I mean, that is our deep dive on the new Sync 4 system. And there you have it. That is our video showcasing everything you need to know as far as the brand new Sync 4 system. If you haven't already done so, make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel with that bell notification turned on. Make sure that you register for that Bronco Sport giveaway. Those links will be down in the description as well. And then feel free to hit up tccustoms.com because every single time you order a part or merchandise from that website, automatic extra entries into that giveaway. So make sure you check that out. If you haven't already done so, smash the thumbs up button and have a great day. Peace.